This video is a brief introduction to proof. Hopefully most of you have seen proofs in high school, especially in your high school geometry class, but even if you haven't, this video should give you a good foundation to which to begin your becoming proficient at proof. So some terminology. Um, what we're going to be doing is basically mostly proving conditional statements and they'll be the so P implies Q. P is the premise, if you remember, or the hypothesis, and Q is the conclusion. In order to go that from the premise to the conclusion, we want to take a bunch of base steps that we're able to justify. So how do we justify those steps? Well, there's some terminology here. Um, the overall thing we're trying to prove is called the theorem. Uh, what do we use to prove the theorem? We use basic definitions for a domain in which we're going to be working. So most of these examples we're going to do today, the domain is going to be the integers, and we'll be using definitions of even and odd numbers. Also, they'll, you rely on axioms. Axioms are propositions that are assumed to be true about the domain in which you're working. So for example, we're going to be working in the domain of the integers, and the integers follow some laws that you're familiar with, the commutative law, for instance, the associative law, and the distributive law. So we'll be using those laws to justify each step in our proofs. So again, the idea is really pretty simple. You use definitions and axioms and previously proven theorems to justify the steps that allow you to prove a new theorem. So this slide basically just reiterates um, what I just said about the conditional statement. We're largely going to be proving things like P implies Q, and we're going to be using what are called direct proofs. And all a direct proof is, is it starts by assuming that the premise P is true, and goes step by step to show that the conclusion Q is true. Now, when we're doing this again, we'll be justifying the steps largely by axioms and definitions from the domain in which we're working, but we'll also implicitly be using these rules of inference. And I mentioned these briefly in class. Let me just remind you what they are. I mean, I think they're all pretty obvious, which is why we won't uh, be explicitly talking about them very much. But uh, modus ponens, so you have some proposition that you know is true. You know maybe some theorem or something that tells you that if P is true, then Q is true, and then you conclude that Q is true. So we'll be using modus, modus ponens a lot. We'll also be using hypothetical syllogism a lot, that if P implies Q and Q implies R, then P implies R. So let's dive right in um, and prove a theorem, again in our domain of integers, that the sum of two odd integers is even. Now, let me just stop for a second and remind you sort of what the definition of even and odd are. An integer is even if it's two times another integer. An integer is odd if it's two times another integer plus one. And those are the definitions we'll be using over and over again. So again, an integer is even if it's two times another integer. It's odd if it's two times an integer plus one. So here we want to prove the sum of two odd integers is even. So we start out and we say, okay, here are, what's our premise? M and N are odd numbers. And so since they're odd, we can write N equal to 2S plus 1, where S is some integer, and M is equal to 2T plus 1, where T is some other integer. So for example, I mean, if you think N is 5, then this would be 2 times 2 plus 1. And if m is 7, this would be 2 times 3 plus 1. So s would be 2 and t would be 3. We're not going to worry too much about what particular numbers they are. So then, what, do we want to, what are we looking for? We want to prove something about the sum. We want to prove that the sum is even. So we write down the sum, n plus m. And then we write down what we know about this, about each n and m. We don't know much. All we know is that they're both odd. So we write down it, uh, substitute in for n, 2s plus 1, and substitute in for m, 2t plus 1. Then we use the laws of arithmetic 
okay, associativity and commutativity, <coughs> to rewrite this, reorganize this a little bit, to be 2s plus 2t plus 1 plus 1. And that, if you add the 1 and 1 together, you get 2. You can factor out a 2, and you get 2 times s plus t plus 1. And again, this just follows from the reassociating things and, and perhaps changing the order of things. And it also, this actually also relies on the distributive law. <clears throat> so we can conclude then, what, that n plus m is 2 times some integer. We know this is an integer because s is an integer, t is an integer, and 1 is an integer. So since n plus m is 2 times some integer, then n plus m is even. And that follows from the definition of even. Okay, so let's go on to another example. Now we want to show that the square of an even number is even. So again, what's our premise? We have that the number we're starting with is even. So we're going to let n be an even number, and n is equal to 2s by definition of an even number, where s is some integer. So then what are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that the square is even. So we write down n squared, and we see where that leads us. Well, n squared is just n times n, and then we can plug in that n is equal to 2s. So what do we get? We get that n squared is equal to 2s times 2s. Then by reassociating things and commutativity of multiplication, we get that this is the same as 4 times s squared. And then we can factor out a 2, and we get that this is equal to 2 times 2 times s squared. But s is an integer, so s squared is an integer times 2. It's still an integer. So everything here in parentheses is an integer. And so we can conclude, because it's n squared is 2 times an integer, that n squared is even. As a final example of direct proof, we're going to show that the product of two odd numbers is odd. Now by this point you should be seeing that there's definitely a pattern here so just kind of make sure you see the pattern here as I walk through this. So we're trying to, the premise is that we have two odd numbers and the conclusion is we want to show that the product is odd. So again we'll start off and we'll let n and n be odd Then by definition of the odd number that means n is equal to 2s plus 1 and m is equal to 2t plus 1 for some t. Then we form the product, n plus m, because that's what we're trying to show. We're trying to show something about the product. And we substitute in for n and m what we know about them, namely that they're odd numbers. And so what that expression looks like. We multiply that all out, and you can verify that that's going to be equal to 4 times s times t plus 2 times s plus 2 times t plus 1. And that uses the distributive law, the associative law, and the commutative law uh, for multiplication and addition. Then if I rearrange things a little bit and factor out a 2, I get that that's equal to 2 times 2st plus s plus t. That's an integer, right? So this is 2 times an integer plus 1. So that means that's an odd number. So n times n is odd by the definition of an odd number. Now at this point I'd suggest you pause the video and pick one of the previous three theorems that we've proven and without looking at the video try to write down a proof and then go back and review that proof and compare it to what I did in the video. This will give you some idea about how well you're observing the material and it'll set you up for the remainder of this screencast.